How to Secretly Lure My Boyfriend's Heart By Mame Chapter 1 It's Time to Run How? What should I do? How to put it in? Claw, help me please! During his unconsciousness, the only thing Techno could see was the face of a guy who was looking at him and those sharp, mysterious eyes which were quite impressive as if they were hiding something inside. Although that was all he could see, the feeling of touch on his body was overwhelming, that he did not know where it came from. His body had hot flushes, his heart was beating so fast, and his breathing was rapid and shallow, as if hands were caressing all over his body, biting, licking, and the hot breath whispering in his ears. Techno, I want more, 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 please. The unfamiliar deep voice echoed in his head while Techno put his arms around the neck of a guy in front of him. He responded to the touch that penetrated into his body. It was hot and deep with endless passion. It was going to blow him up and it made Techno feel so good. The moaning sound was echoing in his head, the sound of two bodies squeezing together along with their breathing. Almost, almost, more. Claw, a bit more. Shock. Abruptly, Techno, who was immersed in the taste of passion, opened his eyes widely when he was saying the name of the person and what he saw startled him. He already saw the guy in front of him, Ken Claw, a guy who was smiling at him and told him, You're my wife now. Ah! Shock. Suddenly Techno got up with a fright. His eyes widely opened as if he saw a ghost. He was soaked with sweat and breathed heavily as if he was just playing football for three hours. But he still did not feel like it was his own room. The image floating in the air was his junior with a cuspid who kept saying, You're my boyfriend now. Grasp. Huh, no, 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 it isn't real. Techno raised both hands to clutch his hair, shaking his head as if he couldn't accept the truth. He was still panting heavily, but when he looked down and found himself in his own bed, he was relieved. Thus, his breath was back to normal. His brain started to work and began to smile. It was a dream, just a dream. Techno almost raised his hand to punch the air. He just woke up, so that wicked story must have come from his mixed-up imagination. That's right, because Type has a boyfriend, I maybe think about it too much, but I think about myself and Ken Clot. Yes, it's just a dream. After that, though, he was just about to cry. While thinking of his best friend since high school, who just had a boyfriend, his best friend, whom he knew everything about, his love life. Techno guessed that he imagined everything because he knew too much about their love life. But why it has to be Kenclaw? Techno muttered before shaking his head. Because Kenclaw is as handsome as Tharn? Am I crazy? Dreaming about having sex with the guy? Sighing, Techno, fooling himself, was still relieved. He turned to pick his mobile phone to check the time, while... Beep! You have a new message. Startle. The message made Techno almost drop his phone in his bed when he saw the notification. Claw. Good morning, I'll pick you up from your house. What? Why does he have to pick me up? A short message with lovely emoji couldn't make the reader smile, but crying out loud, glaring at it instead. It was like Kenclaw knew Techno already read the message. So another message popped up. Claw. I'm so excited. I'll pick my boyfriend up and drive him to work. Boyfriend? What? 
Techno, trying to deny the truth for almost 10 minutes, yelled loudly and tossed his cell phone like it was a millipede. He moved back, almost falling off his bed. Now, his butt pain was gone, but the reality was still there. Last Friday night, he had sex. Last Saturday, he got a boyfriend for real. Swap, swap, swap. No, it's not true. I got no boyfriend. No boyfriend at all. I don't want a boyfriend. I want a girlfriend. God. Why are you so mean to me? I've helped type about his love for almost five years. I'm exhausted. Why you have to send this damn kid to me? I can't take it anymore. In the end, Techno couldn't run away from the truth. Punched his bed so hard. His eyes were blurred as if he was about to cry. Techno threw himself down beside his bed like a poor main actress. Was there any 180 centimeter tall main actress? Beep. It seemed God didn't want him to whine any longer. Because his cell phone beeped again. Techno craned his head back to look at it. Claw. I'll be there in 30 minutes. Claw. And we'll have breakfast together. Even you send a lot of emojis, I'm not a fool who will wait for you. It was for sure that Techno shouted to his phone. After that, he quickly stood up, ran to his wardrobe, grabbed his uniform, but he suddenly stopped. Shit! Swore Techno, because his sleeping pants were wet. Please don't be naive. They aren't wet because of my pee, but my semen only. He thought. But it wasn't the time to wash his underwear before everyone woke up, so Techno took it off and put on a new one. He quickly dressed up, grabbed his bag, went to the bathroom, and brushed his teeth in less than a minute. Then he washed his face in less than three seconds, gathered his stuff, and ran to his bike. I'm not a fool to wait for him. Bang. The oldest brother left at the same time as his brother opened the bathroom door shaking his head tediously for his big brother, because he's gone. That was because his best friend already called him. Technic, the only brother of the person who just fled the house, told Kankla on the phone. His friend wasn't angry, but chuckled and said, That's what I thought. It's okay, every dog has its day. So you realize you're such a dog? Technic said tediously, but Kenkla still laughed. If I can have him, I'm willing to be a dog. See you at the university, then. Kenkla hung up after he finished his sentence. Technic shrugged and went back to his room to prepare for his class while thinking about his best friend, who was the prince of the faculty. His best friend who he met during the first year. His best friend who was named a handsome guy. His best friend, who everyone said he looked as if a character from a novel. Handsome, kind, generous. A gentleman who won the Prince of the Faculty contest. But Technic was the only person who knew real Kenkla. Anyway, it's none of my business. If Kenkla likes this type, it's up to him then. This type? Like his brother? His big brother, who was tall and had an easy-going attitude. His brother's friend, Type, once said. Your younger brother is good-looking. Why are you so ugly? So if his brother would have a good-looking boyfriend, he would just help him. Techno? Why you come here so early today? Ah! Hey, what's going on? At the Ministry of Public Health, Department of Recreation Counseling, the government staff who arrived early still didn't find anything to eat or greet his colleagues. Techno just sat there and held his head as if he couldn't figure out something. When his colleague greeted him, Techno screamed loudly. His voice made everyone look at him. Techno, what's going on? Pelm? Are you picking on him? No, I'm not. He arrived and just sat there, looking serious. When I touched him, he just screamed. All of Techno's colleagues, who took care of him, 
ask what was going on, and it seemed they had no idea what had happened to him. And it seemed they had no idea what had happened to him. They still wondered while looking at adorable Techno. Although Techno wasn't that outstanding, he was friendly and easygoing. He had been working here for just a year, but he befriended everyone. Sometimes staff from other departments asked him to have lunch with them. Beside that, he was the one who invited all the guys to play football every Wednesday. So when a cheerful guy like him was down, everyone was worried. There's nothing. I just have a problem with my family. Techno discontinued for a second because he wasn't sure what caused his problem. Also, he didn't know who to talk to. At first, definitely, he thought of his best friend. Techno didn't care if anyone would call him ungrateful because he didn't think of his parents first. Alas, I molested him, but I got butt pain. If I tell my father, he'll kick me for sure. So his best friend Type, or Tivat, was the first person who popped up in his head. But Type used to hate gays, even though he had been with his boyfriend for four years now. If Techno, out of the blue, told him that he just had sex with a guy, he didn't want to imagine his friend's reaction. Would he say Techno got what he deserved? Or taunted him? Techno lost in his negative thoughts sighed. He smiled awkwardly to his seniors before shaking his head when his cell phone buzzed. Claw. You didn't see my message? No, 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 I won't read your message, I won't. Techno shook his head and almost used a ruler to poke his phone away. He glanced at the notification that came up on his screen, and they just came up continuously. Claw. I went to your place, but you had already left. Claw. You didn't avoid me, right? Claw. Techno, if I make you upset, I'm sorry. Claw. I must disturb you. Claw. I'm sorry. How much do you want me to feel guilty? Techno, who avoided his seniors since this morning, held his head because he was thinking of the handsome face that became gloomier. How unhappy Kenkla was when he realized Techno didn't wait for him. That thought made a soft-hearted person like Techno turn pale slowly. Okay, let's do it. Grab. Ring, ring. Hello, Techno? Techno decided to call Kenkla because he thought if he played along, it would become more complicated. Techno must be honest that he wouldn't be Kenkla's boyfriend. He wouldn't be responsible for anything, just hit and run. Who cared? Um, Claw. Techno was still unprepared when Kenkla picked up the call happily after the second ring, so everything he wanted to say was stuck in his mouth. Techno, it's you. I'm relieved now. You didn't reply to my text, so I'm worried about you. Are you okay? Usually you text me back quickly. That's fine if you're okay now. I went to your place this morning, but Technic said you already left. I should have told you last night, so I wouldn't have to drive for two hours to reach you. Well, if you say so, what should I say, he thought. Techno, who avoided his junior, kept lowering his head close to the edge of the table when the guilt kept hurting his heart. The more he listened to the childish, exciting voice, the more he became soft-hearted. If Kenkla was an annoying kid, Techno would slap him for sure. But a good kid like this, he couldn't do that. I... I was in a hurry this morning. My phone ran out of battery, and I just charged it at my office. So I just saw your message. What a relief. You didn't avoid me. Hurt. His guilt was hurting him. No, I didn't. That's good. I think you won't keep your words. Hurt. He felt really guilty now, and it hurt him more and more. I'm sorry. A person with a commitment like you must take care of me for sure, don't you? Bam. It was his own guilt that was attacking Techno, crushing his heart into the ground. I have to work. Talk to you later. Hey, 
Techno. Couldn't stand listening to that deep, soft, happy voice. Techno hung up and hit his head with the edge of a table. His act made his college approach him quickly. His friend thought Techno suddenly had epilepsy, while Techno couldn't feel any pain at all because his guilt was killing him. But if he agreed to date a guy when all of his life he would only look at girls, it would be such a mess. So, I have to run. I won't wait for someone to kill me. Up. The idea made Techno promptly sit up straight, shake his head, and didn't care about his sore forehead. He set his mind. I have to get rid of him. The kid like Hankla will undoubtedly meet someone beautiful or handsome. He will move on from me. But Techno never knew that. The kid like Hankla preferred someone unique like him. When did you get to my house? My soul was with your brother a long time ago. Don't you know that? <laughs> After his best friend hung up the phone with his brother, Technic, sitting there waiting for class, couldn't help asking. He was confident that Kenkla didn't come to his place this morning because his friend called to check on his brother. That question made Kenkla, who was playing mobile phone, look up and simply answer. If Technic could spit on his friend's face, he would do it for sure. Well, just let it go. Kla, I think you should stop. My brother always likes girls. Even you're handsome as a god. Techno won't look at you. Technic told his friend. He knew that even Techno didn't pay attention to love. He was only interested in football and being a captain for the team during university. His big brother always flirted with girls, though things didn't work out. Actually, the reason why things never worked out was this handsome Kenkla. When Kenkla knew which girl Techno liked, he would flirt with her, and when that girl started liking him, he just dumped her. And that was the reason why, these days, Techno had no girlfriend, even though he got lots of friends more than some superstars. An ugly duckling and a white swan tried to win the same girl. The result was so obvious. Suddenly. Nick, you're my best friend and Techno's brother, but it doesn't mean you can say anything you want. Stop. However, Technic's warning made this innocent-looking, handsome guy glance at him. Those sharp, cunning, hidden eyes clearly showed that he didn't want Technic to intervene. It made Technic sigh, then wave his hands. All right, I've been warning and asking you for three years since you said you liked him, said Technic and shrugged. Fine. Kenkla is serious and sincere. He has been stalking Techno for three years. He won't change his mind easily because of my words, Technic thought. Okay, I won't be involved, and you shouldn't drag me in. Slide. Suddenly, Kenkla passed his cell phone to Technic, and it made Technic stop, looking at his friend in his luxury phone. The 3,000 baht voucher at the Riverside restaurant. I'm sure you can have Fang Fang, the princess of faculty of accounting, this time. Kenkla raised his eyebrows as if he was asking his friend to take the voucher, and it made Technic try to get a phone to check it again. Catch. The guy with the cuspid smile showing his teeth took his cell phone back while asking with a mischievous smile. You have to help me. Deal? At that moment, their eyes met. One was confident with the offer, while another still hesitated whether to exchange his brother with that voucher. Then Technic made a decision that... Offer. Technic reached his hand in front of him. Deal. Of course, Kenkla raised his hand and shook hands with his friend as if they were doing some business. Those burning eyes slightly shone. I'll send you the voucher, and you must help me tomorrow. Yes, sir. In the end, Technic was willing to accept the offer. Hello, Kla? Hello, Nick? Oh, no! At that moment, a girl was calling from behind. Both turned back 
and saw their juniors walking to them carrying boxes activity equipment and one of the boxes fell down because one girl was trying to buy their seniors offer let me help you while technic didn't stand up yet kenklov rushed to grab the box but what was so obvious was where did your sly smile go though now there was only a generous smile which helped double the handsome face Kenkla used both hands to hold the box and also lowered his body to let his junior place another box on easily. Let me help you. You're so small. It would be terrible if you fall. Thank you. You're so kind. Kenkla said with a deep and soft voice which made the listeners fascinated. Kenkla then looked back at Technic, which made the latter one sigh and walked to another junior to help her with the boxes. Nick and I will help. Where should we drop these boxes? Room on the second floor, please. Those girls were looking at Kankla when he smiled. Then he turned back and went to the room with those girls following. Left behind, handsome Technic sighed and followed his friend with no choice. He can fool everyone in this faculty, so don't you think about my brother then. Well, Technic was curious whether his brother knew that the person who he was dating now was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Forget it. I already got a voucher. Techno, you have to take care of yourself. A cell phone buzzed. Stop calling me. I'm scared now. When the blanket of the night covered the sky, the big brother of this family was sleeping, covering his body in the bed while he heard the dreadful sound from the table next to his bed, the sound of a cell phone buzzing as it almost fell from the table. He could bet it was his new boyfriend. The thing was, Kenkla sent a short message. I'll pick you up this evening. I already finished my class. Of course, Techno didn't want Kenkla to show up at his office. If he showed up and told everyone that they were lovers, Techno would definitely lose his chance with a junior from financial division. So Techno texted a short message back. Today I have plans with my friends. That was it. Done. Then Techno rushed back home after work, and he didn't care if anyone would think he wasn't worth his government salary. After that, his family was surprised when the oldest brother, who always ate a lot, said that he wasn't hungry, didn't want to eat, and wanted to sleep early. Techno covered himself in his blanket and tried to sleep because tomorrow he would have to avoid that handsome guy again. But, getting up. I can't sleep! Why do you keep calling? His cell phone kept repeatedly buzzing so Techno got up, soaked with sweat. Of course, he was sweating. He had buried himself under the blanket in hot weather. Techno then grabbed his cell phone. The notifications that appeared on the screen were Claw Techno, I'm at taco shop that you like. Claw, can you pick up the phone? I want to know if you want some. Claw Techno, I already bought you some. I'll freeze them and give you later. Claw, good night. A lot of messages that made Furious Techno soft. So the reason Kenkla called wasn't to bother him, but to ask, as always, whether he wanted the dessert. The call that Techno used to pick up comfortably and answered every time. It was what made him like this kid, because Kenkla always took care of others. But now, Techno was the one who doubted it. Techno was afraid and uncertain because of the word boyfriend. But the worst thing is I molested him and made him fall for me. It made Techno want to die. The guilt to change the most excellent, most perfect guy to fall for him. If Kenkla wanted to date a guy, at least he should find a cute and lovely one. Wouldn't that be better? I don't know. I don't want to think about it. I want to sleep. I want to escape. I don't want to see him. After that, Techno locked his cell phone and threw it away. He laid on his bed, covered in his blanket again, and kept telling himself that he wanted to escape, 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 
escape and escape, until he slept. Ah! How come Kinkla is here? Next morning, Techno, tiptoeing slowly from the second floor, was really shocked when he saw a golden brown metallic Audi parking in front of his house. And the person who was leaning against the car wasn't anyone else, but the person he avoided seeing. It's okay, calm down. I can go through the back. I just need to push my car through the back. Techno affirmed himself, secretly grabbing his shoes in front of the house and intended to run to the backyard. But when he reached where he kept his motorcycle key, I took your bike, Nick. Shit. The shoes in his hand dropped to the floor, his eyes, which generally neither too big nor too small, narrowly bulged out. His house located at the end of a side street, if he had no car or bike at this early morning, there was no way to leave without getting caught. So, Techno turned to look at the front of his house and had an opposite thought of what he believed before bed. I fail to escape. I fail and fail. <laughs>